That's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, the governorship elections in Ekiti is scheduled for June the 18th, and on that day, little over a week from now, the people of the state will elect a successor to Governor Kaya de Fayemi, whose term is coming to an end soon. According to the final list released by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, 16 political parties will run in the elections with 14 male candidates and two female candidates, leading the pack of contendants are uh, Abiodu Oyebanji as the governorship candidate of all ruling Progressive Congress, Ola Bisi Kolawale for the opposition, that's the People's Democratic Party, Sheguoni, candidate of the Social Democratic Party, who was the governor of the state between 2007 and 2010. Now, before he was sacked by the judiciary in the judgment that brought incumbent governor fire me into office in his first term. The list is almost unless uh, that's because uh, we're out of time. Uh, the truth is everyone is seeking to become the governor. Now you also have that fact that uh, you have a former governor seeking to return to Adui Kitty government house through what his supporters call the third force, 12 years after leaving the office. Without prejudice to the other candidates or political parties, checks conducted across the state suggest that the above mentioned candidates are the front runners in this year's Ekiti governorship election. We have a guest joining us, Larry Olainka. It's good to have you join us this morning as a political, political analyst. Thank you for joining us and once again, happy belated uh, Democracy Day. <laughs> good morning and thank you for having me. So let's get straight to it now. Looking at the four runners, I mean, you have like 16 candidates, including, uh, you know, two females, which we must commend, and uh, you have 14 male candidates. But according to reports, you have strong contenders, frontliners. Uh, what do you think that Ekiti State currently needs? Well, well Ekiti, Ekiti State presently needs, uh, need, uh, like, like every other state is in Nigeria and in a peaceful environment, an environment where people can go out and do their businesses without fear of being attacked, where people can move freely without fear of being, of being abduct, abducted by bandits. That is the, the that is the most important thing now. The moment you are not you are not secured, the moment you there, there is a high level of insecurity, nothing will nothing will, nothing will move. It is a, it's an agrarian state. Most people can no longer go to their farms now. People, people are kidnapped in their farm. People are killed. Women, women are raped. Daughters, their daughters are raped in their, in, in their farm. So, what the state needs majorly now is a secure environment. It, and uh, what the state needs is a government that, that will be bold enough to, 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 to confront the issue of insecurity at all. Hmm. Uh, but let's also look at you know this candidate. The elections very close, 18th of June, and look at. Uh, you know, the candidates that are vying for, uh, you know, uh, the office of the governor and the spinner debate that's been put out. Um, juxtaposing, looking at the speech that they have made, which of this candidate you think has actually captured the interest and the concern of the AKT people? The first, the first thing you need to look at is, uh, is, is, is the pedigree, personality, Political party, then the experience, the experience of, of of the people contesting. For the for the, for, for, for the APC, we have somebody who who was uh, who was personal assistant to Otumba Niyadebayo between 2000, 2003, 1999, 2003. And we know what happened during that government. Well, it was it was during that government that local government workers workers were owed salaries up to like 12, 13, 14 months. And he was part of the government. He was also secretary to the state government in, uh, like up to like uh, like six seven months ago. So he was he worked with fire me from uh, he worked with fire me between 2010 and 2014 as a commissioner. And it was during that during that government that that it was plunged into untold uh, debt. A lot of money was borrowed. Nothing was nothing was used. So that it was used for nothing. Then he was also part of the government of, of this present government, and he was he was a member of the governing council of the state university. He was part of that governing council that sacked over 1,000 workers in that university. So you, that you, I, I read out his, his own antecedents, and then then we have candidate of PDP or Tumba Principal who was a supervisor in the, in the local government 
who was who was uh, also a family member between 2007 and 2011, who was also a uh, member of the governing council of Federal Polytechnic Bida between 2012 and 2014. Who was commissioner for environment in the state between 2014 and 2018? He was chairman of PDP in the state between 2020, 2020 and 2020, 2021. So those are the two. Then the other person, Engineer Shaguni, who was governor of the state 15 years ago. If you have been governor 15 years ago in the states and you say you are coming back, I've, I've, I've had reasons to tell people this. The, the same way uh, President Buhari was brought back, having been president 30 years ago, and they brought him back. He, he thought he was going to come and uh, apply 1985 solution to, to Nigeria's 2015 system problems. We know where we are today. So if uh, my, my question is, is, is clear, if you have been governor in 15, 15, 20 years ago, there's no point trying to force yourself back because the situation there will be different from the situation now. The, the dynamics then are different from the dynamics now. So, so those are the three three main contenders, though, though I, I like to limit myself to the two main political parties in the country, that's the APC and PDP. Uh, but, but, do you think that, the but do you think that ideology is fair at the time where we're pushing for a thought force? I mean, you know, usually the media has been blamed for pushing that narrative of having just two forces. You see, you see, in Nigeria, we have always been pushing for thought force. Let me give you an example. In, in 1979, we had like five political parties, UPN, MPN, PRP, GMPP, and MPP. The, the predominant party then was PDP, it was UPN and MPN. In, uh, the same thing happened in, uh, in 93 when political parties were increased to like to like six. I think I think uh, uh, one uh, nap or something by 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 late uh, to, to Tunji Britwit was added to it to make six. We still had MPN and UPN as the two predominant parties. In in uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, 1999 we came up with many political parties. At the end of the day, what did we have? We have we have PDP. As the predominant party, then we had then we had AD, then APA, APP, and as, as time went on, all those parties matched to become one. So at, so at every point in the political life of Nigeria, we've always had two main political parties. We've always had two main, but there will always be oh, these flashes of uh, thought force. In 2000, in, in, in 2015. At the national election, there were we held well. Also, told this issue of thought force. In 2019, they came with uh, some people said they were you going to use, you bring UPN back to the thought force. That was they were, they, that was, was when they brought SDP. They brought SDP to it to some point. We have had we have had time where they where they thought ADP will be thought force. Uh, NDP will be thought force, and all those things, all those things. So we we've, we've never had issues of uh, during election. You will always in the state here, for instance, in 2007, also particularly contested governorship election under uh, under MPP. We thought it was going to be thought force. How many vote, How many votes did it get at the end of the day? In 2014, uh, Senator Michael that we call him Obia, brought Labour Party as thought force. At the end of the day, got less than 20,000 votes in the election. So there has always been, there will always be oh this thought force, this thought force. But at the end of the day, it always it will always end up that it will always be two predominant political parties. Hmm. But but you also can take out the fact that you know if you have Sheguoni, oh, he's very prominent. I mean, he's been governor before, and that already is you know a fact that has been established. And the SDP is not as much as it doesn't match up the popularity with the. A predominant party that's the APC and of course the PDP. But you know, do you think it would be fair, you know, to rule out the SDP? As, as a matter of fact, we have uh, 16 contenders now, and it's been limited to three uh, because you know of the capacity, strongness, and the platform of this party. Do, do you think it would be fair, you know, to rule out the SDP out of this? Like, like I've said, there will always be contenders. Uh, at the, uh, there will always be contenders. There, we have like there have been more than ten contenders. But in most cases that have that have because I've, I've been part of politics here for a very long time, 
I've, I've also witnessed issue of uh, people trying to bring third funds in other states. So, but in this case, in this case, Saturday, Saturday is very near. When you have a when you have a political party that that uh, up to up to today, up to today, how many how many governors does SDP have? How many senators we we, we rally support for SDP? How many political office holders, how many persons will rightly support for SDP in the state? So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to retreat, I don't want to retreat this matter to talking about SDP or whatever. But what I'm telling you clearly is that this election will still be between PDP and APC. Okay, so this will just be the final in just a few seconds because we're out of time. Uh, with we're looking at this contenders now, now according to the report and data that's been made available we have three of them contending despite other political parties do you think that they have the capacity um, you know to deliver uh, the kind of leadership and solution that the people of Ikiti need I have read out I read out their 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 political CV I've told you I've told you about the APC candidate who was secretary to the state government and who has been part of Fiamis government. He was part of his government during his first tenure, and he was also part of his government during the second tenure. And we know what the state is witnessing today. There is insecurity everywhere. Uh, Obas are being kidnapped in their palaces. People can no longer go to their farms. There is there are workers employed by PDP government were sacked. I, I, I mentioned the over 1,000 workers staff in Exo, where the APC candidate was a member of the governing council representing the government. I, I've also mentioned that even when caught three months ago, the, 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 the appeal court, which is the last court for industrial matter, gave judgment that those workers should be reinstated immediately. Up to now, that judgment has, has not been obeyed. That is the person coming on the platform of, of APC, a party that has refused to, to obey court, court, court judgment. And I've also told you about Bisikola Wale of the PDP, who has worked, who, who has grassroots, who has experience in grassroots governance, who has experience in legislative governance, who has experience even in executive governance, having been commissioner. Who also has political experience, having been chairman? Uh, Mr. Lionka, we have to let you go now. Thank you so much uh, for your time and your thoughts. I mean, I wish we can continue uh, with this conversation. But of course, as we inch closer to uh, June the 18th, we will definitely share your thoughts on the issue as we proceed. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Uh, we have been speaking with Larry Lionka, he's a political affairs analyst. Uh, we appreciate his time on the show. That's the size of the conversation this morning. On The Breakfast, I hope you had a great time. We'll definitely return tomorrow. The time again is 7 o'clock to 9, where we take you through the entire show with uh, great conversations generating different reactions in different spaces and great analysis coming your way right here. I am Messi Bopo. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel if you missed out on any part of the conversation. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Have a great day.